Let's do some math for fun. Here we have the limit as n goes to infinity, n factorial over n to the n's power, and then raised to the 1 over n power. As you can see, this looks pretty crazy, right? And you can also see from the screenshot right here, I got this question from Brilliant.Work back in 2015. And right now, I'm really happy to show you guys how I solved this. And be sure you watch the whole video for the solution. And also, at the end of the video, I will tell you guys more about Brilliant.Work. I'm pretty sure you guys will like the website too. And I will also show you guys more Oreos, all right? Anyway, let's just look at the limit as n goes to infinity. What happens to the inside? Namely, n factorial over n to the n's power. Well, n factorial, in fact, is much smaller than n to the n's power when n goes to infinity. And we can actually conclude that the inside goes to zero. And let me just be specific. Let me write this down right here for you guys. When we take the limit as n goes to infinity, if we have n factorial over n to the n's power, this right here equals to zero, okay? And if you look at the power, which is just one over n, when n goes to infinity, and if we just have one over n, of course, this is equal to zero as well. And now, combining these two together, we know this is actually another zero to the zero situation, right? Can we draw any conclusion with this? No. Especially, I have done a lot of videos lately that when we have zero to a zero, in fact, it can be really crazy. It can be one, it can be zero, it can be e, it can be any number, right? Well, we have to do more work on this, okay? And usually, our go to move is to use Lapidus rule to solve limits, right? However, here we have n factorial. I cannot really take the derivative. Even though I change the n to x, I don't think I can differentiate x factorial. And of course, we are not using the gamma function, okay? So don't go too crazy, all right? Hmm. Okay, so I will try to just avoid using Lapidus rule, but I will still have to think about, look at here. We have a sequence raised to a sequence function. Well, I mean, a sequence power. Just like when we have a function to a function power, what do we usually do with this? Well, I would like to introduce an ln so that I can bring the power to the front. That way, we are just talking about a product of two functions rather than a function to a function, right? So it's the same as a sequence to a sequence power. And this is how I will keep track of all my steps. I will just say, let this to be L, and I'll put the L on the left-hand side right here. I will say that L equals to this right here, and hopefully we can solve for L. And now, I will erase the zero to a zero's power. And I will just take the natural log on both sides, right? So let's do this. Let's do that. And first of all, on the left-hand side, we just have the natural log of L. And this is the natural log of the limit. And because natural log is a continuous function, so we can say this is the same as the limit of the natural log. So I can take the limit outside, and then we have the natural log of this. And you know, I will write this down, which is, or take the natural log of this, which is n factorial on the top over n to the n, and this is raised to the 1 over n power, but you know, we can bring the 1 over n to the front, and that's the point of doing the natural log, right? So I will just write this down as 1 over n right here, multiplying with the ln, okay? Like that. Okay, what can we do next? Hmm. Now, let's go back to the fundamental. What is n factorial? How can we break it apart? Well, on the side right here, let me write it down for you guys. We know n factorial, this is n times n minus 1, okay? So that's n factorial. And let's also look at n to the nth power. When we have n to the nth power, this is, of course, we keep the base, which is n, and we multiply the base n times. So we have n times n times n times da 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 n of these n's, okay? Hmm. We have a bunch of products now inside of the natural law, right? And in fact, this is the division n factorial over n to the n. So technically, I'm looking at this, right? 
n factorial over n to the n. And I can just look at this individually. I can look at n over n, n minus 1 over n, n minus 2 over n, dot, 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 and then 2 over n, and then 1 over n, right? And all this is instead of this natural log. And now, here is the most exciting part. We know that natural log of bunch of product is just the sum of bunch of natural logs, right? So we're just going to break it apart, and maybe we can do something from here. Okay, let's focus on just the right-hand side. This is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. And we still have this 1 over n right here, right? Don't forget about that. And now, this whole thing, and I will just write this down in blue for you guys. Of course, how can I not use the blue pen, right? This is a pretty difficult question. Anyway, this right here, I'll open the big parentheses. I will just have the natural log right here. And the first thing that I want to have is, well, you can look at n over n, you can put it here. And then you add it with the next one, ln of n minus 1 over n. And then you can just keep writing that down. Plus, ln of n minus 2 over n, and so on, so on, so on. But let me begin with the last one first, okay? Let me write down 1 over n here. Hopefully, you guys don't mind, you guys will see why. So we have ln of 1 over n, and I'll close that, and then I will add the next one is ln of 2 over n, and then I will add a bunch of them, and let me just write down this and that, okay? So I will add ln of n minus 1 over n, and then I'll add ln of n over n. And I know n over n is 1, but let me just write it down as how it is. And now, this blue part is the expansion of ln of n factorial over n to the nth power. Okay, does this do us any good? Well, keep in mind, we have a 1 over in the front, and now this is an ln of a bunch of this 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, so on, so on, so on. And the function that we're talking about is the ln function. Hmm, this is kind of suspicious because I am smelling an integral because this is kind of like the definition of the integral, right? By using the Riemann sum. What kind of integral and what's the region are we talking about? Well, let's just do a quick recap, right? So I'll do it down right here. Here is a quick note, okay? Suppose if you want to find the area under the curve, let's just say like this. Let's say y is equal to f of x, right? Well, I want to go from 0 to, let's say, 1. And you'll see why is it 1. But technically, it's a to b. But you know, let me just do it with 0 to 1. OK. We know to find the area of this region, we just do the integral. But prior to integral, what do we do? We have to do a bunch of rectangles, right? And the style of doing the rectangles is that we will cut 0 to 1 into n pieces. OK. If I was from 0 to 1, cut into n pieces, how big is each piece? 1 over n, isn't it? So let me just cut 1, 2, it was just to represent this right here. It's going to be 1 over n, and the next one is going to be 2 over n, and so on, so on, so on. And because I want to cut into n pieces, the second to the last one, this right here, will be n minus 1 over n, and the last one, namely 1, is technically n over n, which is the same as 1. And now, I will just draw the rectangles. So you see, I will have this as my first rectangle, and then this for my second rectangle. I'm using the right-hand rule, OK? And how do we find the area of the rectangles? Well, let's look at the first one. For the area of the first rectangle, it's going to be 1 over n. That's the width of the rectangle. And we multiply it by the y value, right? The y value is f, and you plug in 1 over n into the function. So it will be f of 1 over n. Aha! Does this look familiar right here? And of course, we add it with the next one, which is, what's the width of the next rectangle? For this rectangle, keep in mind, the width is still 1 over n. So let's put that down. But what's the y value now? The y value is when x is equal to 2 over n, you plug it into here, right? So to get the y value, 
into the function. So it will be f of 2 over n. Okay? And then so on, so on, so on. And then, of course, you'll still have 1 over n times f of this right here. n minus 1 over n. And lastly, hopefully it fits right here, it will be still plus 1 over n times f of n over n, right? So just like that. And now, this expression, it's a sum of the areas of n rectangles under this curve, right? Well, if you want to get the area of this region from here to here, what do you have to do? You take the limit as n goes to infinity so that you can make the rectangles as small as possible and that will give you the whole area, right? So now, the area from 0 to 1 under this curve is going to be, you take the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression, isn't it? Well, this is exactly what we have if you take the time to distribute the 1 over n into each every part, right? Well, how can we calculate this the fancier way? You know, this is nothing but just the integral. The integral from 0 to 1 of whatever this function is, which is just f of x dx. That will be it. And that's the idea. Now, how can we deal with this? This is now nothing but just an integral question. This is actually the same as saying the integral from 0 to 1, because once again, we have 1 over n, same as this. And you know it's from 0 to 1. It's because you started at 0, you end with 1. The whole interval is just 0 to 1 of the function, and then of course you attach a dx. What is our function? ln, 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 of course, right? So this right here represents the area well, bounding in between the x-axis and also the ln x curve, right? So this right here is just the integral from 0 to 1 of ln x dx. And now I will show you guys the graph for ln x. I will do it right here for you guys. And we know the graph for ln x is just like this, right? This is y equal to ln x. This integral represents the area in between of the x-axis and the ln x curve from 0 to 1. So it's precisely this region here, from 0 to 1, okay? And yes, this is an improper integral because as x goes to 0 plus, ln x goes down to negative infinity. But anyway, now the question is, is this area even finite? The way to figure that out is, of course, just worked out this integral. We have to use integration by parts to figure out the antiderivative for ln x, and then we just plug in 1. But when you plug in 0 into the result, we have to take another limit. And in that situation, we can actually do L'Hopital's rule. But I will have another video for you guys on just this integral, okay? And now, let me just tell you, in fact, this right here, we do have a final answer. This right here, because it's under the x-axis, we have negative 1, okay? The area is 1, but you know, the integral value right here, this is equal to negative 1. Right? So we did it. But now, is this the answer to our original limit question? No, because remember, on the left-hand side, we have L and L. We want to get the L by itself, right? And now, let me just write it down. We have L and L is equal to negative 1. Of course, we can just do e to this power, e to that power, cancel this out. In another word, we know L, which is equal to our original limit question, namely the limit as n goes to infinity. And let me just put that down right here for you guys. n factorial over n to the n, and then 1 over n right here. This limit is equal to e to the negative 1 power, and of course, you can write this down as 1 over e. So, here is the answer. It's really crazy, right? This is an example when we have 0 to the 0 goes to 1 over e. And we didn't do the L'Hopital's rule right here. We have to do L'Hopital's rule when you're calculating this integral, okay? But we do end up with a pretty crazy result, 1 over e, which is really, really cool, right? 
And before we go, I just want to tell you guys that I got this question from Brilliant.Work back in 2015. I've been going to your website now to do math for fun for many years. And if you like to solve interesting math problems, then you also like Brilliant.Work. It has a lot of challenging and creative math problems, ranging from algebra, geometry, to calculus, and beyond. And we can also do their fun problem of the week for free. Keep in mind, as a student, the best way to improve is to practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice. And as a teacher, I also solve their questions so that I can use them with my students as well. And the best part is that they have step-by-step -step problem solving courses that cover challenge questions such as this one right here. And you can get unlimited access to those courses with a premium subscription, and that's the one that I have right now. And to support Black Pen, Red Pen, and learn more about Brilliant Work, please go to brilliant.work slash blackpenredpen and sign up for free. And for the first 200 people who visit the link, Brilliant will provide you with a 20% off annual premium subscription. It's really fun and you will be able to support my channel at the same time. At the end, thank you so much and go check out the link and here's the Oreo, I promise. Oreo! You're so fluffy. I know. <laughs> Can't you just do that all night? I know, huh? Yeah. yeah. Imagine you're just petting her and do math. Try to prove the Koshi remote equation again. Oh, no again. problem. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Hey, you guys let me know. Do you guys like this Oreo more? Or do you guys like the bunny Oreo more? Or maybe you guys like the real Oreo. But to be honest, this Oreo is not as fluffy as the other one though. I'm sorry to say. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, come back. <laughs>